And now, The Rock Newman Show. Folks, welcome back to the 10 o'clock hour of The Rock Newman Show. I, I, I just must repeat, that, that 9 o'clock hour was, was, was riveting. I talked to my wife during the break, and she's out of breath. I mean, it was just, it was a breathtaking show. William Killebrew and Ronald Moten, I can't thank them enough. They are both gentlemen who are doing things in the Washington, D.C. community, making a difference in people's lives. And as we say unapologetically, The Rock Newman Show is an effort. Our agenda is an effort to make the world a little better place. One conversation at a time, I again say thank you to Ron Moten and Will, William Killebrew for telling us a traumatic, telling, tragic, somewhat depressing stories, but a story that must be told and explanations that must be given to, to, to try to help the situation that goes on in our community. And really, it is a wonderful dovetail to be able to come into the 10 o'clock hour from such a really heavy and heady subject to have someone that is, has optimism deep in his DNA. Someone who is who I've referred to as an attitude and achievement expert. Now think about that. I don't say those words lightly. Attitude and achievement expert. Somewhere in there, and I'm going to let him explain it because he certainly can do a much better job than what I can. But if your attitude is right, somebody told me your attitude helps determine your aptitude, where, you, where you're going to go, what you're going to achieve. It is my distinct pleasure to have Willie Jolly on the Rock Newman Show. Welcome. Hey, thank you, Rock. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, when people, when people hear the name Willie Jolly, they smile and start to feel good. <laughs> What's your secret? Well, you know, I first start by doing, if I don't do it, people will call you and email you and text you. If I don't start as I always do, I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, can't refuse it. Didn't seek it, didn't choose it. But it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it. Give account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but an eternity is in it. And I want to greet everybody who's watching, who's listening, who's uh, listening even by a uh, 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 pre-recorded pre version. Well, I'm grateful. That's what it is, Rock. I have an attitude of gratitude. And so I am grateful about the fact that every day that I wake up without a chocolate, outline around my body I got another <laughs> shot right? I got another chance to do something and I love what you said to make the world a little bit better because I believe that must be our focus as people is that we try to work to make the, the world a little bit better and part of that making the world a little bit better is by making ourselves better mm -hmm. one of the things I found that <clears throat> I, I believe people have to understand that great people give great service yeah good people give good service. Mediocre people give mediocre service and negative people will kill your business and kill your organization. So you got to make a commitment to better yourself and grow, grow, grow greatness in yourself and in your people. And so that starts with an attitude shift. And so what happens is when you start to change your thinking, change your attitude, you change your future. And so you, you can actually change the trajectory of your life and your success and your finances by shifting your attitude. Willie Jolly says it so extraordinarily well. I'm glad we got you for an hour because we got a lot to talk <laughs> we about. We got a lot to talk about how to help people live their best lives. Yeah. You know what, Willie, part of what I like to do is to make sure that my listening audience, my viewing audience, we've got folks that are uh, writing us from Trinidad, wow. from Dominican Republic, from uh, Amsterdam, wow. um, all, over, all over the globe. I, I was so delighted to get a message last week. There's a, a lady who's been on this program, her name is Sally Schwartz, and she's been very much a part of a DC education and cultural exchange with different countries. And she was in Japan mm. two weeks ago, sent me a note 
that two Japanese kids who had watched this program when some of their Japanese friends were on told them, I saw you on the Rock Newman Show. So wow. I, I, love, I love what Ooh, I do. And wow. I, I love having well, you Well, in that here. case, let me introduce myself to those who might not know me, okay? Because <laughs> uh, I want to make sure they know who Willie Jolly is. Let me tell you who Willie Jolly is. Well, let, me, let, me, let me try to do it this way. Okay. Because what I was about to say is I like folks to know not just what, the guests are doing and, and the impact that you're having today, but who they are. Yeah. Where were you born? Where did you grow okay. up? Okay. I'm from Washington, D.C. I was born, raised, reared right here in Washington, D.C. As, as Les Brown says, locally grown, but nationally known so, <laughs> <laughs> or internationally now. That's but right. I, I, I am a product of the Washington, D.C. public school system. Okay. Went to Roosevelt Senior High School here in Washington and then went to the American University, got my undergraduate degree in psychology and sociology, and then went went to Wesley Seminary because I thought that I had this desire to inspire people. And the only way, you and I both know, for many years, the only way that a person who had an interest in inspiration or or speaking or encouraging or a love, they had to become a preacher. Sure. That was just the step by step you went. Yep. And so I went to seminary like anybody else who might have an inspirational bent. And I, I, I got in seminary and... I realized I didn't quite fit with the rest of them. I was the oddball. I, I was singing in jazz clubs to put myself through seminary. And I was uh, going to dances and parties and having a good time and yet had this interest and inspiration. Finally, I got my, uh, my master's degree in theology uh, after many years because I would stop and start and stop and start. I'd <laughs> sing. I'd go on tour with Gene Carn and Phyllis Hyman. As Let a me ask you something. Yeah. You, you were singing jazz, putting yourself through seminary school. Yes, yes. What was one of your favorite tunes that you used to sing? Sunny. Come on. Come on. Thank you for the This is the Rock Newman Show. Come on with it. Yeah. Thank you for the things you made so right. Oh, the dark days are gone. The, the bright days are here. Here, my, my sunny son, love is just so sincere. sincere. Sunny, once, once so, so true. I, I love you. you. There you go. <laughs> so I would sing jazz, put myself through uh, uh, college as well as graduate school, and then I became a full time jazz singer. Uh, they offered me a church. I said, I can't do it. I'm not called to that office. I am supposed to do something different. At that point, Rock, I didn't know what it was. Uh -huh. I just knew there was something else in me that I was supposed to do. So I started singing jazz. To support myself, did jazz clubs here in the Washington area for seven years. I won uh, the Washington Area Music Association Whammy Award, uh, five times best jazz singer, best inter entertainer, best performer. But then after seven years, something happened. And this is what is the crux of my career. I had a setback. Mm. Okay. Went in a jazz club one night. Jazz club owner said, love your band. Love you guys. You're filling up the nightclub. You got standing room only audiences. People love you. But the owners of the club had decided they got to get a better return on investment. Hmm. And the only way to do that with a full nightclub is that we got to get either more people in here. We can't do that because it's full nightclub or we got a lower cost. Yeah. And the band's the biggest cost. And there's something else that's filling up nightclubs that's a lot cheaper than a band. We bought a karaoke machine. Huh. And I said, but, but, but what about my bills? I mean, I work so hard. What about my bills? And I realized that night, Rock, nobody care about your bills but you and the people you owe. Am I right. right about That's it? Right. And I went home and told my wife, I got to do something else. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I got to do. And I took a job with the D.C. public school system as a drug prevention coordinator, talking to little kids about staying away from drugs. And as part of my job, I had to give speeches to little kids about staying away from drugs. And it was clicked. Yeah. That was it. I found what when I was, was that? doing. That was 1990. Mm -hmm. That was 19, so from 19, May, June the 1st, 1990, through May the 31st, 1991, I worked for the D.C. Public Schools, giving little speeches to kids. Uh, after a year and getting all sorts of invitations from all, not only schools here in Washington, but literally around the Washington area, the district of Maryland, the Virginia area, I, I all saying, this guy, he's, a, he's entertaining, and he got a powerful message for kids. And I started getting more and more invitations. And I realized I had to leave my job and my comfort zone and step out on faith. And I left my job, went out on faith, started speaking, and within, and I, did, I made a decision, too. I spoke to one of my friends. I said, you know what? I'm going to be one of the best speakers in the world. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to be one of the best in this business. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm going to do it. And he said, and he was kind of, he had questions. He said, I don't know, man. You're speaking to little children, and, and yeah. That was like uh, <clears throat> middle of 1990. Mm -hmm. 
uh, in 1999, I was named one of the top five speakers in the world uh, by Toastmasters International. Uh, former winners include Colin Powell, Norma Schwarzkopf, Nelson Mandela, Margaret Thatcher, Christopher Reeve. Uh, my books started coming out. They became bestsellers. In uh, 2005, I was inducted into the Speaker Hall of Fame. And uh, you and I just recently got the, the, I'm very honored that I was with Barack Newman. We got the Businessman of the Year Award. For, so y'all don't know that. The two of us got it by the African American Chambers of Commerce uh, in September. Uh, but I'm very grateful that I was able to find what I was supposed to do. And I'm also grateful, and I want to encourage people, that sometimes you'll have a setback in your life. You'll have some sort of difficulty, some sort of uh, challenge that seems overwhelming. Your life will hit you with some teeth-rattling experience. And we, we, cr we run to God saying, God, our world is shaking apart. Our world is shaking apart. Only to find out, Rock, that it's God who's doing the shaking. Hello. Sometimes he got to shake your world up to get your attention, to give you some perspective, to give you direction and perspective, to help you find what you were born to do. And it was through getting fired that I found what I was born to do. And, and it's been it's been very, very good to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, earlier before this show started this morning, yes. uh, one of our uh, one of our producers, yes. um, Tawana Clayton, yes. she last week was not with us on the show. She was in the Dominican Republic. Mm. And so when we talk about the Dominican everybody was talking about their experience in the Dominican Republic. I shared that I spent three days there with Sammy Sosa. Mm. So that was a very, very special thing three days. Yes. So Sammy Sosa was the one in baseball been very, very good to very, me. Very, very good to me. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, there was a phenomena. Uh, it still goes on. One of the perhaps best sold books ever. And when I say phenomena, I don't think that's hyperbole. I think it was a phenomenon. It was called the law of attraction. Yes. How does that fit? Absolutely, that fits. You know, at what we speak, what we think, what we put out is what we draw to us. If you say you're sick, you're going to be sick. You say you're poor, you're going to be poor. You say your children are bad, they're going to be terrible. What you speak is, uh, is magnetic. So we have to, st the law of attraction says we have to speak what we want, where we're going, even before we get there. We have to start speaking what we're trying to achieve and put it out into the universe and into the, s the way of life. Have you ever noticed, Rock, uh, here's the law of attraction. Ever noticed you think about somebody one day and the phone rings in them? Yeah. Have you ever have you ever had the experience where you're going down the street and something says to you, turn off here? Well, this is not my turn off. Turn off here. And you turn off a lady, you find that there's an accident or a big tra traffic jam down there, and you avoided it. Yeah. They say, Isn't that a coincidence? Nah. Mm -hmm. It's 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 the power of what I call the intuition and that law of attraction. And you have to be learn how to turn that volume up on that that in you inside of you and turn down the volume of all the negative naysayers all around you because yeah. they're negative naysayers yeah. all around you and you have to learn to turn their volume down and turn your intuition your your law of attraction your positive thought pattern up inside of you and when you do all sorts of amazing incredible magical things start to happen in your life Goethe said it like this he said, until one is committed, there's hesitance, the chance to, tar to turn back, always ineffectiveness. But the minute, the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence, the hand of God moves also. And all manner of things occur that would never have regularly occurred. Commitments has power and magic and genius in it. So that's why you must begin what you're beginning, do it now, and have a positive expectation. Yeah. Okay. Um, Wayne Dyer. Yes. Wayne Dyer. Uh, incredible book, The Power of Intention. Yep. And his premise is that whatever it is, whatever that goal, whatever that dream is, it must be laced with good intention. Absolutely. And you know, Oprah says the same thing. She said there's power and in intention. And I believe that we must not thought that one, you just said so, the goal, the dream. Yeah. We must for an, have a goal. I was on my, um, I, I was online yesterday. We did a big program because next week is the, uh, the kickoff of my uh, my national speakers boot camp and we're going to have it here in the Washington D.C. area and by the way people can go to the website willyjolly.com if they're interested in being a speaker or interested in learning how to in get into this billion dollar speaking industry and we want to teach people what I've learned over these 23 years but I was on a uh, on an internet chat and a lady said what's the secret to 
being able to live your dreams. I say, one, you must have a dream and a goal that's clear. And number two, you must have intention and a why to make you want to keep fighting for it. Folks, after these messages, we're going to come back and talk to you more about realizing your goals, achieving high achievements, and being your best self with the expert, Mr. Willie Jolly, after these messages. The weekend is here, and no matter what the weather's like outside, you'll find the deals inside here in the beautiful showroom of the all-new Pohanka Hyundai in Capitol Heights during their giant markdown madness sale. Smart shoppers know that every new Hyundai in Pohanka comes with Hyundai Assurance and America's best 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. But why don't you tell them about the markdown sale, Joe? I'll be happy to, Kim. Folks, shop around on the web, and you'll see lease payments on a new 2013 Elantra GLS at $179 a month. Today at Pohanka Hyundai, $99 a month. That's right, a $99 payment on a brand-new Elantra. And 89 a month on a new 2013 Accent GLS Automatic. How do they do it, Joe? It must be the volume, Kim. A brand new building, hundreds of new Hyundais, and Pohanka's low payment and easy credit programs are designed to get everybody driving. But you have to get here today. Rush to the giant Markdown Madness sale at exit 13 off the Capitol Beltway. Pohanka Hyundai, king of the Beltway. All financing for a limited term on approved HMF credit. My baby drives a Pohanka. And now, The Rock Newman Show. Folks, welcome back to The Rock Newman Show. I have the incomparable Willie Jolly here. Um, has been referred to so many times as an attitude and achievement expert. When we... Uh, oh, I've got I've to tell you the new title. Tell me about that. All right, because uh, uh, for those who don't know, I'm very proud to say in May 19th, I finished something that had been a goal for mine. For, my, for me for many years, a goal of mine for many years, I, uh, I earned my doctorate in uh, uh, achievement from the California Graduate School of Theology. And so, yeah, so I, I, I went back to school. I've been talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. One day I'm going to do it. One day I'll. You ever been about one day I'll? One day I'll do this. Oh, one day I'll do it. By all means. And so I decided I was going to do it and make it happen and just 
did just sacrifice and I was able to go back and do uh, I do a two year program in one year because uh, thank God they were willing to credit my four books. Uh, it only takes a minute to change your life. A setback is a setup for a comeback. Turn setbacks into greenbacks and an attitude of excellence. They credited that to my first year, and now I, uh, I'm actually officially. My wife had to say, "Now, Doctor Jolly, take out the well, trash." I'm about to tell you right here now. <laughs> Henceforth, we shall not just say Willie Jolly. We should say the good doctor, <laughs> Willie, Willie Jolly. You know, Willie, you just said something um, uh, about your four books yes and uh, you know when you talk to most people one of the things they they wish they could change would be their finances mm. and one of your books is about turn setbacks into greenbacks yes tell us about that book and how how folks can 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 turn it around in terms of their financial picture well that book was born out of my work as a corporate speaker and working for major corporations and specifically with one corporation particularly was a little company called Ford Motor Company. Uh -huh. You little, ever heard little, of that? Little, little, little company. Little company. Uh -huh. In 2006, Ford was on the brink of bankruptcy. Yeah. Ford was uh, going down. They'd gone from 50% market share down to 15% and they did something they'd never done before. They brought in a new CEO from the outside. Yeah. A guy named Alan Mulally. Brilliant yeah. gentleman from, yeah. they brought from Boeing. Alan said, we've got to change the culture of this organization in this company or we're going to be our business. Yeah. And so he said, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a hundred, uh, we want 25,000 people to take a buyout, to leave, mm -hmm. because we got to get some of these people who've been here for 50, 60 years. There was mm -hmm. no mandatory retirement age. Yeah. And so he said, we'll give them $100,000 if they leave and four years education, four years health insurance. But unfortunately, in six months, they were trying to give 25,000, only 4,000 left. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't people take $100,000? Well, imagine that you only have a high school education. Your wife has a high school education or GED but in good times you're making six figures high six figures yeah. and you got a house in, in Detroit a house in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan yeah. and an RV because yeah. things were good but yeah. then Ford's market share went down because of quality sure. and they went down and they, they th went from three shifts to two shifts so everybody was losing money they said to me, we heard about you. We heard your book, Setback and Set Up for a Comeback. We've heard you've turned around companies and organizations. Will you come and speak for our people? So I said, I'll be happy to speak for your people as long as you allow me to tell my story mm -hmm. and try and encourage them to live their best life. He right. said, okay. So for the next six weeks, my wife and I, we were in a different city every day for Ford. And finally they did the buyout. And when they did the buyout, 38,000 people took the buyout. 50% uh, more than they had anticipated. That was 2006. 2007, they hired me to do their television spots that they would play internally about excellence. Mm -hmm. And in 2008, I did another tour about world class, creating world-class vehicles. If you remember, in 2009, Ford was the only one of the big three yeah. that didn't take a government bailout. That's right. And since then, they've had billion-dollar quarters. Yeah. And so... That well, I, let, let me stop you. Mm -hmm. Let me stop you, because uh, um, let's go back. Yeah. Because you had the conversation... And then uh, a year later, uh, a year or so, not too long yeah. after, when they had just taken, 4,000 people had taken the buyout, 38,000 took the buyout. Yes. You may be too humble to say you had some impact on well, that, I, I, but, I, but I, I've studied up a little bit, yeah. and some folks have given you some credit for that. What was your message that helped people? Because ultimately what happened? Yes. When you went from 4,000 to 38,000, people felt good enough about themselves and the potential for them to realize achieving what they wanted to achieve outside of Ford. You had an impact on that. You what know, was your message? I, I appreciate you saying that. And let me tell you what was the key there was helping people see that there were possibilities for their future. Mm -hmm. Because many people, they thought that that was all they could be. One guy said to me, he said, I am 58 years old. I worked at Ford for 40 years. Wow. He started at 18. 18. Yeah. He said, for 40 years, I never, ever before this day ever thought or heard about having a dream. See, my daddy worked for Ford. My granddaddy worked for Ford. That was all I thought I was doing. Mm -hmm. That guy, he said, I'm taking this buyout. You have inspired me. See, the word inspired means you breathe anew. You have inspired me to give it a shot. He took that buyout to $100,000. He went back to school, got a, a four years of education. He got a degree in business management. He opened up a subway shop with that $100,000. Today, he has 20 subway shops uh, in the Michigan area. Hallelujah. And he said, he emailed me often and says, you 
you know, I would have never done this. I'm doing better than I could have ever dreamed. That was the concept. What we did was lit a spark in people's consciousness that they could do better. Yeah, and when he, Willie, today, yes. he writes you saying how you inspired him. Yes. Tell me from your heart and soul how that makes you feel. You know what? That blesses me incredibly. I'm going to give you a quick story. I shared this with General Colin Powell one day over lunch because it just, I told him as he an army guy, he could relate to it. And, and it was so profound. I've been speaking now for 23 years. And uh, some years ago, about seven, eight years ago now, I was doing a tour of Japan for the U.S. Marines. And it was high security time because of the terroristic threats. And so I got to the base and I showed them my passport and it goes, they, they swipe it and then it takes a few minutes and then they either allow you on or they don't. So all the other party had gone through and then they swiped mine and I'm waiting and then they, a phone rang and, and the security guy picked up the phone and said, yes, yes, yes. He said, Mr. Jolly, you have to stand over here. But all my friends have gone on through. You have to stand over here. So I went over there and stood, and a, a few seconds later, two big burly uh, security guards come through the back and say, you Mr. Jolly? Yes, you need to come with us. Mm. I, but, 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 but you need to come with us, sir. Mm -hmm. Wow, they have AK-47s. I'm saying, whoa. Mm. So I go through this long corridor. I get through another corridor and get to a door that says Commandant's door. Go mm. through the Commandant's door. He's not even in there. He comes from his uh, outer, inner office to the outer <coughs> office and says, are you Willie Jolly? And I'm thinking a little strange then because yeah. my passport says William Jolly. Uh -huh. I said, yeah, I'm Willie, Willie Jolly. He said, are you Willie Jolly the speaker? Uh -huh. Now, my passport says nothing about a speaker. Yeah. He said, are you Willie Jolly the speaker who wrote the book A Setback and Set Up for a Comeback? At this point, I'm really like freaking out. I'm, what in the world? He said, let me tell you something, sir. In 1993, I was a 11th grader at Archbishop Carroll High School in Washington, D.C. I was on drugs, I was using drugs, I was in a gang, I was messing up. You came and spoke to our class, and you talked about your three friends and how you have to make a choice about your future by who you hang out with. Yeah. He said, you gave me a message that day that impacted me. I went home and told my mama that day, I am changed. He said, the next day I went and signed up for ROTC, and I excelled in ROTC through the rest of the 11th grade year and 12th grade year. I got a scholarship to West Point, and today I'm the commandant of this base. And then he did something blow my mind, Mark. He pulled out his wallet. He opened it up and pulled out a tab piece of paper of the notes he had taken that day that's when I knew yeah. that this is what yeah. God sent me here to do yeah. to inspire people to live their best lives and to see the possibility so that's why I want all your viewers and listeners to, to, to do I want to give everybody a gift the book that changed my life is a book called think and grow rich just like the law of attraction think and grow rich Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill and that book was the first book I ever read from cover to cover. It changed my life. It changed my thinking. It talked about the possibilities. And that I, I still reread that book once a year. I recently was honored to be one of the uh, experts that celebrate the, the legacy of Napoleon Hill for the Napoleon Hill Foundation. And as a result of that, they have allowed me to give that book in a digital form away to all my friends on my website. So everybody who's looking, I want you to go get Think and Grow Rich. Kamal, I want you to get it. I want you to get Think and Grow Rich. Kamal, one of your producers, he's my nephew. All right, he's my, my nephew. I want y'all to go to willyjolly.com slash free. willyjolly.com slash free, F-R-E-E, -E, and get that book digitally downloaded on your iPad, on your phone, or on your computer. Read it. Read that book. It will impact you and help you to think and grow rich. Am I right about it? Let me tell you something, Willie. So let me co-sign that. Yeah, all right. Let, let me co-sign that. At a point in my life where I felt I was floundering, knew that I wanted to reach higher ground. I was picking up and looking for inspiration. I was picking up one book here and one book there. Some of them I finished, some of them I didn't. I picked up Think and Grow Rich. And when I first read it, it's written in a language, and I'm gonna say this to y'all because I wanna co-sign with an exclamation point. Go to Willie Jolly's site and get this book to just briefly tell my experience. When I first read it, it was like 
I wasn't quite ready for it. I mm-hmm. thought I wanted something, but I wasn't quite ready because I put it down. I didn't get through it. It's written in sort of an older, almost corny sounding that's, language, something in 1929. That's and right. That's William right. Jennings that's they're talking right. about in the whole bit and, and, and Carnegie and all of these old folks. And I'm trying to, I'm not wrapping my mind around it. And somewhere within the year after I picked it up a couple of times and put it back down, my life wasn't where I wanted it to be. I got into that book and I started making notes. That's it. On the on the edges, on the margins. That's right. I started on at the end of the chapter where there was somewhere to make some notes. And I started practicing the affirmations. Mm -hmm. I started listening to the words of an incredibly wise man who has one of the best-selling books in the history of books. That's right, right, right. And I have said, that book, as much as any experience or education that I have had, contributed to whatever success I might have had. That's how powerful that book is. Incredible. And that is a book. Because we all That's right. go have peaks and valleys. That's right. That is a book that if I feel myself in a valley, mm-hmm. I go back to today. So Willie Jolly just gave you all some incredible advice. Willie, tell them how they can get it once again. WillieJolly.com slash free, F-R-E-E. Look for the, uh, you'll sign in your email, and then you'll look for the Think and Grow Rich book. Also, there's an article, uh, interview I did with Bob Johnson. Uh, on my Sirius XM show. And by the way, for those who got Sirius XM, I'm on every week on uh, Saturday at 4 o'clock, uh, Monday morning at 8 a.m. and 11 o'clock on Wednesday morning. They re- uh, replay the same interview. And uh, interview I did with Bob about how he went from being a little government labor guy on Capitol Hill to becoming a billionaire and the struggles, but how you can do it too. It's possible. And I wanted people to do it. So willyjolly.com slash free. Go and get some of these resources. They're free. <laughs> we give free because we want people to, you know, some people can't afford it. They can't afford my books. If you can afford my book, go get a book. If you can't, go to the library. Most libraries have my books. But go to these places and get free resources that will help you to do that. One young lady said uh, one day, she said, uh, I was speaking to someone, she said, Mr. Jolly, you know, you, you're talking good, but what do you drive? What kind of car do you drive? Are you, you know, car, are you rich or what kind of car do you drive? <laughs> I said, let me tell you, baby, I drive a very nice car. I said, that's fine, but that's not important. That don't have I, I, to do I, I said, nothing. that's not important. I could drive any car I wanted. That is not the car I drive, it's what drives me. Yeah. Hello. What's in the inside that drives me? And I have a desire to inspire, and I have an attitude of gratitude, and I want to live the God life, the best God life God mm-hmm. has given me to live. See, I believe in my dissertation for my doctorate, I wrote about the fact that God's gift to us is life. Our gift to God is what we do with our lives. Yeah. We should live our lives so with such a level of excellence that when we die, even the undertaker is sad to see us go. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and, 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 and our, that we have a need to continue to grow. Yes. Until we don't have any more breath in our body. You know, there's, there, there, for people, there's a, uh, something in our DNA that pushes us and desires for us to grow, to, to push. So that's why we pushed ourselves off our legs on our knees when we, was, we were crawling around. Something said, get up. Yeah. And then people say, why do you climb that mountain? Because it's there. Yeah. You know, why do you start a radio show that now it broadcasts worldwide and impacting people? Because I, I had a desire to impact people. I, it's not about the money. It's, a, it's something internal. Unfortunately, some people disconnect that desire. Yeah. And they just settle for mediocrity. They they just settle for just, I'll just get by. Close enough for jazz. I'll just work for 40 years so I can get a check for living, uh, go watch, and then live on 40% of what I couldn't have lived on before. And just, it was just Les Brown said, to get a job so I can be just above broke. And I say to you, no, no, no. Reconnect that DNA. Reconnect that wire that says, I have to aspire. I was born to achieve. I was born with the seeds of greatness, the DNA for achievement. Let me go and do something magnificent. And one day, you know, the Bible says it like this. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children's children. So that we should, we should be living lives now that in 40, 50 generations, 
they'll know you was here. That's right. Am I right? Now, Carnegie's children know he came here. For sure. Am I right? Yeah. Rockefeller's children know he came here. <laughs> so we need to know we was here and why we was here so that our grandchildren's grandchildren's grandchildren will be able to say, thank God that my great, great, great granddaddy was Rock Newman. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, I was in Houston recently in terms of continuing to try to go to a leadership training program. Mm. Um, um, it was called Discovery Leadership mm. by a gentleman. I, for the life of me, and he would kill me. I can't remember his name right now. I just, I'm pretty sure the last name was Jones. Okay. But one of the things that he talked about, and it's a chapter in his book, is about who are you? Mm. Are you the flag? Or are you the wind? Mm. Because the flag just sits there, mm -hmm. just lays there. It is the wind that stirs it up I like and, ma that. and makes it stand up. So, folks, as we go to break, are you the flag or are you the wind? Think about being the wind. It's a better thing. Mm. When we come back, Dolly, in a few moments, you'll hear more inspiration from the great one, Dr. William Jolly. <laughs> Hello to all my friends in the DMV. I am Rock Newman from The Rock Newman Show. I want to tell you about the MGM Grand National Harbor, the most exciting project to come to the District, Maryland or Virginia in quite some time. You're going to have great fun. Come on down, support this project with all you have. It is going to be wonderful for the area. We're going to increase our tax base. We're going to get funding for the police department, for ambulance, for fire, for education. It is really a project that is going to benefit our area. Folks, we want to support in a very strong DMV kind of way this great project from the MGM Grand National Harbor. Now, The Rock Newman Show. 
Folks, I am Rock Newman. This is The Rock Newman Show. Today is Saturday, November the 16th. Joining me in this hour is Dr. Willie Jolly. Uh, multiple, multiple books. He's an author. He's a gentleman of high inspiration. Um, th th thought of as an expert on attitude and achievement. Uh, coming up in the 11 o'clock hour is Malik Yoba, actor, entrepreneur, musician, writer, and healer. And as I said earlier, we're really going to talk to him about all of that, especially that healing part. And that I see that Malik is a musician. Um, if, for those of you who are joined us earlier, you also know the Willie, Willie, Willie Jolly can carry a tune himself. We might get another one before we wrap up uh, this hour. Willie, so many, you are, you are such an ebullient person, so, so full of energy and life. Um, I noticed the other morning I was meeting the uh, state's attorney for Prince George's County. I screwed up where I was supposed to meet. I was supposed to meet her in the heart of Upper Marlboro, and I went out 301 uh, to a place called Rips. Mm. I just we, we had talked about meeting there the week early, so I screwed it up. As I was going, and I got there early, and since I had such a leisurely drive, I really paid attention to people mm. as I rode past them, as they were riding past me. And people early in the morning had a frown on their face. Mm -hmm. There's so much like grief and negativity that seems to prevail. Why? Well, people realize that life is challenging, okay? okay. But they don't also realize the other part of it. Life is challenging, but it's still worth living. Yeah. And when you get the second part of it, it really starts to make you have a different perspective. Uh, I, I think that many people, they get up with the, just the first part and they say, oh, woe is me. I, you know, some people wake up and say, good Lord, it's morning. I say, good morning, Lord. You know, yeah. it's yeah. another great day. Right. I get up, I make my staff. In fact, I have two websites. One is uh, willyjolly.com, and I want people to go to get the book, uh, willyjolly.com slash free. But my other website is my nonprofit website, which is Jolly Good News news.org uh -huh. uh -huh. jollygoodnews.org j-o-l-l-e-y goodnews.org and in that you'll see a couple things you'll see uh, some of my messages from the hour power with the crystal cathedral you'll see me on tbn but you'll also see a piece that i have done for my staff we do a thing in my office every day my team we all get around and i say okay y'all ready let's get it on here we go i want everybody to repeat after me say i'm healthy i'm wealthy i'm happy i'm whole I feel terrific. I'm blessed and highly favored. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And then I make a repeat. I'm healthy. I'm wealthy. I'm happy. I'm whole. I feel terrific. I'm blessed and highly favored. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I do that because I want to get them an affirmation that this is going to be a good day. Mm -hmm. See, uh, one of the things I tell people about shifting your attitude and changing <clears throat> your attitude, and what you say, people wake up with a bad attitude. I make a point to tell people, you want to change your attitude? Here's how you do it. Before, first thing in the morning, before you turn on television radio you you get up and you, you you be grateful you write about something you read something positive you you listen to something positive that's why we got my daily motivation at 5 50 every sure, morning sure. on whur yes. and soon you'll see it on national television mm -hmm. every morning so that people can get something positive <clears throat> then the second thing i do is say okay you have some sort of affirmation but some people can't get that i say here's a simple way to do it say good morning to the first 10 people you see yeah Good morning, yeah. good morning, yeah. good morning, good yeah. morning, good morning. Yeah. Now, some people you'll say good morning to will say, uh, uh. and some people say, what's good about it? Yeah. You still say it because you're not saying it for them. Mm -hmm. You're saying it for you. Because sure. if, uh, if I hear it 10 times in the morning, I'm on my way to a good morning. Mm -hmm. And if I had a good morning, I'm on my way to a good afternoon. And a good morning, good afternoon, I'm on my way to a good evening. Yeah. And I had a good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I've had a good day. Yeah, and I do that seven times. I had a good week. And I repeat <laughs> that four times. I had a good month. Hello. I repeat that thing 12 times. I got a good year. And every year gets better and sweeter and greater yeah. because of the fact that I, I have an affirmation that it's going to be a good morning. Well, it tell me this, uh, because folks would be looking in and they're like, hey, man, okay, y'all two positive guys, you know, y'all and had it made, got it made or whatever. <laughs> and it's easy, to, yeah, it's, right. easy to talk, it's easy to talk about that. Hey, I'd like to tap into something. Yes. Because somewhere in your life, yep. something painful, Ooh. something hurtful, Ooh. 
something traumatic uh, has happened. Yep. And I don't want to dig in, you know, anybody's yeah, oh, personal know. business or yeah. anything. But what I'd like to for you to do is to reflect on what might have been a very serious and painful and hurtful challenge for you. Yep. What that was and then how you overcame it. Woo, you know what? I'm glad you said that. You know, people know me for my books. Sure. Only takes a minute to change your life. Yep. A setback set up for a comeback. Turn setbacks into greenbacks and an attitude of excellence. Those are my four books that I have written by myself. The fifth book, though, that we sell as part of our book package, people can go online to get my book package, is Chicken Soup for the Christian Soul Number Two. Mm -hmm. In that book, that book comes with a CD. Because it's the only book we have that comes with a CD because I want people to hear what you just said. In 2003, I lost my mother, my only sibling, my brother. And my father-in-law in 30 days. You hear what I just said? Not just in the year of 2003, but within 30, 30 days. 30 days. My mama died on April 11th. Ooh. And I, my brother, Les Brown, and I eulogized her. And 25 days later, my only brother, Noble Jolly, dropped dead of a heart attack at 8 a.m. in the morning. Mm. My niece called me and said, Uncle Willie, come quick. And I ran down to Shepherd Street in D.C. And my brother was laid out on the floor, and they were trying to get, resuscitate him. We all went to the hospital, all his five children and me. And we, they looked at us and said, he gone. Ah. And we were broken. And then I, I called my wife. I couldn't even drive. I said, somebody got to come get me. I can't drive. Ah. And then I get home. I'm in my, my office. I'm just just overwhelmed with grief, overwhelmed with grief. And then the phone rang. My son picked up the phone, and I heard him gasp. <gasps> he said, Dad, granddaddy just died. My wife's father, my pastor, the man who taught me how to be a husband and father, dies eight hours after my brother. Same day. Yes. Same day. So in 30 days, I eulogized my mama. I have to speak and eulogize my brother, and I have to eulogize my father-in-law, who was my pastor. And so... Overwhelming grief, overwhelming grief. But I had to shake, I, had, I, I was so overwhelmed with grief, I couldn't even, I didn't know if I wanted to go on. I didn't know yeah. if I wanted to go on. But I had to do an attitude shift. And what I had to do is I said, what would I say to Rock? What would I say to uh, one of your producers if they were went through that? I'd say, I'm so sorry. I had to think and have the same conversation with myself. I'm so sorry about your loss. I'm so sorry. My heart goes out to you, but you got to make a decision. Yeah. Right now, you've got to make a decision. But life is not about what happens to you. It's what you decide to do about it. Mm -hmm. you got to make a decision, Willie Jolly. Mm -hmm. you got to decide are you going to curse because a rose bush has thorns mm -hmm. or celebrate because a thorn bush has roses? Mm -hmm. Are you going to curse because they're gone or celebrate because they came this way? Sure. And when I shifted my attitude, when I looked at it from another perspective, I said, you know what? My mama was 42 years old when I was born. In, in the 1950s, people told pe women not to have babies after the age of 40. Yeah. My mama didn't listen. Thank God she yeah. didn't listen. Yeah. My, and so I had 48, I had 46 more years with my mama before she died. Yeah. And then my brother, when he was 18, had a new car. He was a new driver. He was out on the beltway and almost got hit by, almost had a major accident with a tractor trailer. He would have been gone. So yeah. I had another almost two decades with him. Right. After that, and I said, oh, you know what? I can curse because they're gone, or I can celebrate because they're here. Yeah. And once I shifted that, everything changed. The grief left. So what I tell people, that's why attitude is so important. Stuff happens. Yeah. Setbacks happen. Life happens. Challenge happens. We go through these situations, but we've got to make a decision. It's not what happens to us that counts. It's what we do about it and how we proceed to make a difference. So your attitude will impact every part of your life. And then that, then that impacts how you, whether you get up in the morning and be down and dreary and, and, and letting life whip you and have a victim mentality. Or you start to get a mindset to say, you know what, I'm going to be a victor, not a victim anymore. I'm going to win and I'm not going to be losing anymore. I'm not going to be the tail. I'm going to be the dog from here on. And I'm going to run around like a dog, my tail wagging and like, I'm happy as can be because <laughs> Abraham Lincoln said, you just about as happy as you choose to be. Mm -hmm. You know, Willie, traveling with the Howard University baseball team in the mid-70s, um, I had an opportunity to speak to uh, Daddy King, mm. Martin Luther King's wow. father. Wow. And it was only, if I remember correctly, weeks after a tragic event. So in 1968, Martin Luther King was assassinated. Mm -hmm. A year or a couple years after that, A.D. King, his brother, committed suicide. Mm -hmm. 
a few years after that in the 70s, uh, Daddy King's wife was sitting at the organ playing music in the church for the church service and a deranged man came in and slaughtered her. Mm -hmm. A little bit after that is when I was speaking to Daddy King. Wow. And I'm telling you, man, knowing what he had been through, you know, the team had just lost the game and I was a little bit depressed. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just sitting there and saying, you idiot. <laughs> you just played a silly game. And this man has gone through what he's gone through. So I got up the nerve to, we actually were one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And I got up the nerve to ask him, I said, you know, you seem, you seem to have so much enthusiasm. You seem to have it together. King assassinated, suicide of your son, the killing of your wife. How do you, how do you, how do you hold on? And he said, my responsibility is to continue to be grateful for what I do have. Mm. And, well, I, I, I want to tell you, man. You that, know, that will move you, boy. As you talk about, yeah. I mean, so many times, one, mm -hmm. I had to look in the mirror all along these days or whenever it might, might have been that, you know, Rock Newman wasn't getting what he wanted or had a bad day or whatever it might have been and really think about that. And just recently, just recently, I sent to a friend or two. Um, who were really, you know, sharing some woe is me kind of stuff. And I told them that. I wrote out what I just told you, mm. you know, and I said, you want some perspective? That's right. And, you know, they, one of them felt as if I was being very callous. Mm. I was like, well, no, I'm, I, I, it's, I, I wrote it because I care. Mm -hmm. And I think you really need perspective, you know. I think the word is perspective. Yeah. You know, folks perspective makes the difference and so what you decide you know a lady said to me the other day we you know we told people to say is the glass half empty or half full yeah she said to me something i had never heard of before she said it's not really important whether the glass is half empty or glass is half full what is important is that you got a glass yeah and you got one that you can use to, to do what you want to fill it up as you see fit i right. said baby you're absolutely right yeah you know it's about perspective when you change your perspective you change your attitude you change your future and so i'm encouraging people to, to go to my YouTube site. I got, I got video after video, show after show, speech after speech. Go to my website. Go to, uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, listen to me on Sirius XM. Soon you'll be seeing me on national television with my Live Better with Willie Jolly segment. Uh, WHUR every morning in Washington. You can even get it online at WHUR.com about 5.50 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time. And get a positive message. Well, our goal and Jolly Good News, don't forget jollygoodnews.org. But what I want you to do is I want you to fill yourself up with the pure, the powerful, and the positive. Because when you start to fill yourself up with the pure, the powerful, and the positive, it's like a reservoir. And so you're going to have them days. You're going to have those moments. You're going to have them situations. But you, then you've got something to draw from. And, you know, it's, it's best to, uh, to have something to draw from, a, a, a well that's well stocked. And so I'm encouraging people to know stuff will happen. Life will be challenging. But for sure, for sure, for sure, the best is yet to come. Come you know, on, somebody. You know, Willie, uh, when, uh, we sat at the table when, when, when we got that award. Yes. And uh, I think both of us beamed. Absolutely. About the incredible women that we had in our lives. Amen, amen. We are blessed men. We are blessed men. I, was, I got an award last night. I'm very honored that the Sisters for Sisters Network Incorporated gave me the uh, Legacy Award mm -hmm. in, over in Baltimore. And so I, I took a moment in my, my speech to say, I'm grateful, but I would not have gotten this award without my bride. Mm -hmm. You know, my bride, I've been married to her for 28 years. Right. And I told her one day, I said, if you leave me, I'm coming with you. <laughs> <laughs> but you and I, we talked about that. We yeah. have been married. We, one of the things I tell people, the most important, I tell my son, the most important decision you ever make is who you marry. Because yeah. they'll be responsible for 90% of your misery or 90% of your joy. Yeah. So marry well. And I married well. Yeah. I over married. And, 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 and as, as as you say, over our heads. You're way over our heads. <laughs> That's right. Well, look, we have 
uh, we've got a couple of minutes okay. before we wrap up here. Yes. We've been getting tweets and wow. texts and, and, and Facebook posts and everything else. Good. Said, Don't let him go until he does another song. <laughs> oh, okay. There we go. All right, do a little bit of song. Here's a song that I used to do at the jazz club. It's like a Bobby McFerrin song. Boom, doom, ba doom, 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 ba doom, doom, ba doom, 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 ba doom, doom, ba doom, 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 ba doom, doom, ba doom, 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 ba doom, doom, ta ka doom, ta ka doom, doom, ta ka doom, 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 ta ka doom, ta ka doom, 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 ta ka doom, better than four sets, a dizzy, better than count, bass is banned, better than Rollins and Coltrane, better than being on the stand, better than Ella Fitzgerald, better than Miles Lady's news, better than Joe Williams' ballads, better than Roger Rose Blues, better than Larry Lady Day, or in the end, I'm on a ray, I didn't anything except being in dome, oh, ba boom da do ba boom dum ba dum no better than um do ba dum ni da thing boom dum da dum no better than um do da dum ni da thing doom doom da dum doom better than anything except being with you. <laughs> a very wise elderly man told me one day, know when to shut up. <laughs> it's zip. And we'll be back with Malik Yoba in the 11 o'clock hour. Thank you my very pleasure, much, my dear brother. Rock. I love you. Love you, brother. All love right, you. Man. <laughs>